Hey guys, um, so here is a quick video on how to assemble uh, my, my kit for the Dynamax. I'm going to start off by just pointing out a couple of things. I've got my assortment of uh, everything I'm going I'm to need right here. Um, so here's the, uh, the hub that I'm selling and uh, here is the center body that I'm selling. A couple of things to point out on the hub. Um, the way it's machined right now, the blades are going to fit on there relatively snug but you should be able to push them all the way back by hand so to, to where the the base of this blade this portion is touching the uh, the back of the the uh, back of the hub uh, when you press it all the way down you should be able to do that by hand um, if you can't do it by hand it's not a big deal uh, you can press this once it's all assembled you press it together um, in a vise or with a press and that'll work out just as well so uh, I wanted to point that out Along with that, if um, if for some reason that now this shouldn't happen, but if for some reason when you try when you go to put your uh, washer, your stock Dynamax washer, and uh, you try to uh, place it on the face of the hub, this should fit easily. Okay, it should be a slip fit, uh, but just in case there's some kind of some kind of issue with the the tolerance on on the on the washer that you might have, um, all you need to do is take the emery cloth that I'm sending you. Uh, you can chuck this up in a drill or um, or in a drill press if you have it. I use a three inch long um, 832 screw or bolt. Um, fits in there pretty well. I'll tighten it down. I'll put a, uh, a nut on one end. So if you can imagine at this point I have the ability to put this end into a drill or a drill press as it's spinning I go ahead and just run my emery cloth on this surface to um, sand away just a small portion of it and uh, so if, if you have any issues you can do that to uh, reduce the diameter on it to make it fit but uh, pretty simple okay on top of that a um, couple other things I want to point out about how to reduce the diameter on the shaft of the uh, of your motor now the way this thing is machined, I've got the diameter of this hole on the back of the sh uh, on the back of the hub to it's set to uh, 7.985 millimeters plus or minus 0 .001, and the tolerance on that is extremely good. I've checked all, all of them that I'm sending out, and and uh, they are very close to that spec. Now that should be more than sufficient to work with uh, the tolerance on any given uh, HET motor. Um, so just just throwing that out there you will absolutely have to uh, do some work to the motor shaft to get it to the uh, correct diameter so what you do is you're gonna have to have your ESC plug everything in um, and then uh, you, you're, you're gonna be running the motor while you're holding it in your hand and I'll put up a, a video clip of how I did that as the motor is running you take your emery cloth and you run it on the shaft of the motor and you take away a little bit at a time, checking constantly to make sure that this hub is fitting on there properly. You don't want to take too much away. Um, the other uh, thing I'd like to s point out as well, on the emery cloth, I'm going to include a uh, 50 grit, or sorry, 80 grit and a 150 grit. You want to put some WD-40 or some kind of oil on this before you start start uh, running it on on the on the motor shaft. If you don't do that, um, you risk getting some of that dust that's going to come off the shaft, that metal dust, into the bearing or into the motor itself. But if you if you put some oil on uh, on the emery cloth, that'll that'll take care of that problem. Uh, it won't be an issue at all. So a couple of things I wanted to point out, and uh, that should make the uh, process a little easier. So we're going to start off by assembling the the, the the rotor the fan portion and uh, so let's get to that okay so here are the one two three four different items I'm gonna need to put the the fan the rotor together um, I, I what I do is I'll take the the washer the stock washer and I'll start building it up uh, with the all the individual blades um, just like so so here it is there's the washer. I've got all the blades assembled uh, onto the washer. 
At this point, uh, what you want to do is you want to take the, the hub, the new hub, place it inside the, the, uh, the blades here, making sure that you line up all the, all the, all the uh, holes, the three different holes here, for the 440 uh, bolts that are going to go in. So uh, make sure you do that before you press this together, because if you don't, um, you're going to have to take it all, you're going to have to press the hub back out before you can uh, redo it. So just make sure everything's lined up. Uh, before you press it all together and, and, and a way you can ensure that it's, it's going to happen properly is to maybe put one of the one of the bolts in there that'll kind of keep the alignment. So I'm going to take this over to my vise, press it together, and uh, I will be back. Okay, so here it is. I've pressed it all together. Um, you're going to note that the, the hub may stick out just a tiny bit back behind the, the blades. That's okay. It's not a problem. Uh, one other thing, uh, when you put this thing in the vise, when you put the hub in the vise, I recommend you use a piece of wood or something to put um, on this surface so you don't uh, uh, scratch it up like I did. Uh, this is my test piece, so I don't really care uh, that, that 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 happened, but uh, for you uh, for you guys, it's something to watch. Okay, so once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and tighten the, uh, or put the, the three stock 440, 440 uh, screws into the face of the hub and uh, tighten them down. Okay, so here is the, the rotor. It's all set up and uh, ready. So this is complete at this point. Um, you do want to balance this, at least statically. So in order to do that, I'll show you uh, show you guys what I like to use. So in order to uh, balance this, I like to use this uh, Dubro balancer, and uh, it works extremely well with this, this setup here. You just uh, put the shaft. Uh, into the rotor and uh, and balance it using either epoxy or glue which will go inside of the spinner so the spinner will act as the uh, the, the place to put put that weight and it allows you to hide uh, any weight that you put uh, inside it so it's not unsightly but uh, make sure you do that at least uh, statically if you can get it dynamically balanced uh, that's always good but really it should not be it, it, it's not that big of a concern um, because these these uh, blades are extremely balanced the fan is balanced as it comes from the factory um, so just something to keep in mind okay so now that the uh, the the rotor is complete we're gonna focus on the center body and setting up the uh, the, the stators so here's my uh, shroud uh, excuse the fact that it looks uh, pretty beat up I've been uh, using this thing for years and I've been doing all kinds of testing on this lately to develop this kit so um, everything else works on it. It's just a little, little old and uh, looking aged. So to set up the center body, um, the way the way it's going to work, it's going to be a little different than the stock setup. Instead of on, in the long stators, normally what you do is you have the long stators, you set everything up, and then you have a couple of uh, 632 bolts that go in from the outside of the shroud um, into the center body. Well, I switched that around a little bit for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, there's not enough thickness here for me to uh, screw something into it. At least n not enough to where I'd, I'd trust it, um, considering, considering we're going to be pulling about you know, 18, 19, 20 pounds of thrust uh, with this fan. So what, what, the way I've set it up, the screws, the, the 632 screws that I, that I include in the kit are going to go inside out. And uh, once they're in there, what I like to do is get the stators, the long stators on there as quickly as possible just so things are not falling off. So once these are on, this is ready to go into the shroud. Now this is the front side, so just so I'm, I'm all lined up, I don't mess this up. Uh, this is the, the top of the fan for me. It could be the bottom, uh, just depends on how you have it set up. We just slide both of these in here. There's one side, and there's the other. Okay, once that's in there, um, what I want to do is, you, you want to at least put the nuts on the outside to hold this thing together. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so I threw the, uh, the 632 nuts on the outside of this just to hold everything together and keep it from falling apart. I don't need to tighten it down just yet. Another thing to note, the, 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 the screws that I'm going to include uh, with the kit, they're two inches long, so they're actually going to extend out quite a bit. I've already cut these off to the length that I need, and I do that after I put 
the mounting bracket. After I install the mounting, ba mounting bracket, I'll tighten this nut down and then I'll cut off any excess uh, that I don't need on that screw. So that's why uh, this, this looks a little, little different than what you're gonna see when you go to assemble your fan. I just use a Dremel to cut it off. All right, so once this is done, next we can just take our uh, short stators and start sliding them into the fan. Now on one of the stators, you're gonna have to make a cut on the short stator. You're gonna have to cut it um, at the base of it, just like I have here. So here's a normal one. So this is a normal one. It's uh, squared off on one edge. Here's the modified one. I've got, I've, I've just made a slight cutout. The reason why we do that is so that we can access um, our set screws on the back of the, of the rotor hub uh, once the fan is fully assembled. And I've got a small cutout here. You should be able to see it right, right here. Um, and what that does is that allows me to put a, um, an Allen wrench down from the top of the fan into the, uh, into the back behind the, the rotor in between the center body and uh, we can tighten down our uh, set screws and uh, I'll show I'll show you guys how to mark uh, this blade so you, you're able to do that so as an example here's the uh, the center body removed from the fan you can see that cut out right here all you have to do is place one of the short stators into that position either uh, mark this with a uh, some kind of pencil a pen whatever whatever works for you for you guys go ahead and mark that and then uh, cut that small portion off. That's not gonna affect the operation of this fan at all, so um, nothing to worry about there. Okay, so with that in mind, just uh, remember that you wanna put that in a very specific spot. Don't get it mixed up with the rest of it. And uh, now you can go ahead and start installing all of your short stators. And uh, I'll be back after I complete uh, all of that. Okay, so here is the um, stator portion complete. I've got all the stators in there. Um, the hole that you want to make in the shroud in order to access the set screws should be 35 millimeters back from the leading edge here. So from here to here it's 35 millimeters and just make sure that it lines up with the location of this cutout so that you can access the set screws. So at this point all we have left to do is get the motor in here and uh, we'll start tightening the motor down We'll slip the uh, the fan in there, the, the rotor, and uh, the fan should be pretty much complete. So I'm going to get the motor in there now and uh, tighten things down. Okay, so one, one other thing to note, if you have issues getting this motor into the hub because it's getting caught on one of these, uh, the, the heads of these uh, 632 size screws, just go ahead and tighten the nut down a little bit. It will pull the screw in enough, allow you enough uh, clearance to get the motor in there. I checked all of them before I mailed them, so they uh, they should not have this issue, but in case they do, that's that's the solution. Okay, and uh, I, did, I ended up tightening these down just a little bit. So here's the motor, slips right in there. You have just enough clearance to get a, uh, a, a loose slip fit. Once the motor is in, make sure your wires are where you want them. I like to have the wires to the top of the uh, to the top of the fan. That way, they're easy to bend down um, to get them to exit out of the uh, from back behind the fan. Once that's all done, you can go ahead and start getting your um, four screws into the face of the motor to hold it in place. Here is the completed uh, stator assembly with the motor. I haven't put all of my short stator screws in there because I'm going to be taking this apart after I make the video, so I'm going to leave that out. But uh, as you set this up, as you guys set this up, make sure you put those in there and tighten them down as well. Um, if you you should this should not happen, but if for some reason you you run into uh, issues where those screws are too long and they're and they're poking out and uh, maybe not allowing you to tighten these these two screws down just go ahead and cut those cut the um, uh, cut the stock screws down just a tiny bit to where you have enough clearance it's not going to affect the uh, operation or the strength of, uh, of the fan so once this is complete all we have left to do at this point is to throw our uh, rotor uh, onto that shaft tighten it down and uh, we'll be uh, off to the races um, Another thing to uh, note, I have 
three set screws on this on this on this uh, hub. The main reason I have three is to keep it balanced. Um, I didn't just want to have one or have two. Three is optimal for balance. Now I recommend that once you uh, get this get this hub onto the shaft, and, and uh, as you uh, tighten the set screws down, it's going to make an indentation on on the shaft itself on the motor shaft. Go ahead and take a Dremel, and I would at least make one flat spot on the shaft, um, if not three. The reason why I like doing three flat spots is so that when you tighten down your set screws, uh, it will cause that metal uh, to rise up just a little bit because you're going to bite into the metal on the shaft. Now, because the tolerance on this is so tight, uh, if that happens, uh, you may have some trouble trying to pull the rotor out if you ever need to replace this motor or get into it for whatever reason so that's why I recommend doing three flat spots uh, if you can however at the very least I think uh, we should do at least one okay we're ready to put this fan together and uh, finish what we started here the way I'm gonna do it is so I know where the set screws are I'm gonna I'm gonna line it up so that my set screw is lined up with uh, this cutout, which is lined up with the hole to tighten this down so I don't have to hunt for it. Um, I also know uh, the way this is designed, each set screw back here is in line with the three screws uh, on the face of the hub. So that's how you know it's properly aligned and uh, you can get your um, Allen wrench in there to tighten it down because you're not going to be able to see into it. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, there it goes. You're going to need about a millimeter and a half of clearance between the uh, between the, uh, the the back of the hub and the face of the the, the center body. And you, what you want to do is once you get the get the fan on there, just rotate it and make sure that it rotates freely. So at this point, I'm going to line up this uh, bolt with the hole that I drilled and that should allow me to tighten down one of the set screws and sure enough there it is same thing for the others now I'm not fully tightening this because I've already marked the uh, the shaft on here and uh, I need to get in there and uh, put some flat spots on the shaft so I'm just gonna do it lightly just for this demonstration This last one's being a little bit difficult, but it's still there. Just got to hunt for it, and there it is. Okay, so at this point, the fan is on. Everything's running nice and free. Last thing we have to do is take the stock spinner, put it on the face of the fan, and you can tighten this bolt down using a I believe it's a three millimeter wrench or sorry about a five millimeter wrench once everything's tightened down there's your fan ready to go um, it runs extremely smooth all the parts are very balanced so I, I don't anticipate that people are gonna have many uh, issues with that but uh, that's that's the fan now moving on to the the tabs here a couple of things I want to point out there as well so the way the stock tab comes it's it's a solid piece at least that's how I, I had it it was a solid um, L-shaped piece sorry about that my battery started to die I had to reset it but uh, getting back to it so it's an L-shaped piece it was a solid piece um, this hole that you see in here I, I cut I ended up cutting that out the reason why I did this is because when we go to install this bracket onto the fan uh, we need enough clearance to be able to tighten this nut down um, the the nut is just a little too large um, for that space here it's it's not enough for it so once you put the tab on there since I've already got the cut the hole cut in there it's it's easy for me right now I can just put the nut on and start start uh, tightening it down 
And this is going to be a little easier with the uh, full 2 inch uh, screw in there since I've cut it down a little bit. It's, uh, it's not as easy. Okay, so it took a couple of tries, but I got that on there. And uh, once it's on there, I just use a, a set of needle nose pliers to tighten it all down. So there you have it. Completely tight, that bracket is not going anywhere. If you don't want to drill a hole in there like I did, that's fine. Uh, I, what I would do is I just take your Dremel, maybe put a, a cutting wheel on there, and just make enough of a groove uh, in this, in, in, in the bottom portion of the cell bracket so that you have enough clearance for that nut to turn freely. So that's, that's what I recommend. That's the cheapest way to go. I can have this machined. I can get, get new parts for this, but um, that would just end up costing you guys more. And uh, there's no need to do that when you can just make a simple adjustment to what you already have. So that, there's the, uh, the completed fan. Last thing we have left to do is to put the heat sink on there. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that. So here is the heat sink that I'm including. Um, if you guys read through my thread, you know that this is this is meant for LED application for LED bulbs. It's they're extremely cheap. I'm able to get them pretty cheap. They're very they're getting hard to find. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep this up um, and and be able to send these out for free. But um, for now, I have a few more. Um, but bottom line, this is a LED heat sink. I modify it to fit on here. Uh, one thing to note on this as well. When you go to bend the the heat sink, it should already be snug for the motor. I've already bent them enough to where it's going to be snug on a 50 millimeter motor. But if you need to do any more, make sure you don't hold it from down here and uh, and bend it because if you do, there's there's two weak points on this heat sink here and here. If you put pressure here and bend it here, it's going to bend at this weak point. So a better way to do it is to actually hold it from the top, put pressure here. Uh, so that you're bending it nice and evenly all the way across. So we take this heat sink. Um, I'm also including some thermal paste. Uh, make sure you guys use that. Just put some on the inside of the heat sink. Put a little bit on the motor. Uh, you can spread it uh, from here from the cutout just enough to get that heat sink to slide onto the motor. Um, I'm not going to put any on here because like I said this is for demonstration only but as you uh, slide the heatsink on there I like to push it all the way forward. Uh, the, the long stators I've got cutouts. I cut two of the fins out so they should fit pretty well. Uh, they should fit perfectly in there in fact and uh, that's all there is to it. There's your uh, heatsink, your motor and your uh, completed fan. Um, if uh, you guys have any issues, have any questions, um, everybody that's buying these kits from me, uh, I, I'm telling everybody the same thing. Feel free to contact me whenever you need, and uh, I will be more than happy to uh, uh, provide whatever help I can. Um, I think this is a, uh, I think it's a good product. I really don't think there's anything on the market that is as good for the price that I'm that I'm charging, and I think uh, we're gonna do. I think we, we can have some uh, fun fun with this uh, with this fan finally, and hopefully we can start using some of our old old fans and put them to good use. So that's all I got. Um, hope you guys enjoy it and uh, appreciate the, all the support. Thank you.